Hey guys, Starkey Cat here, and now I've been playing the Division Beta for the last probably 24 hours or so, and I've gotten a decent impression of how the game works, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go through my first impressions, that sort of stuff, and talk you through some of the pros, and there are some definite cons, and I'll give you a rough idea of both a PvE and PvP experience. Now, I let you see the sort of character select screen, just because I know some guys like that. I also want to give you an idea of the length of load screens and all that sort of stuff. I've got a pretty good computer, so, you know, it is a good computer, it's running SSDs, all that and the other, yeah, okay, I'm also recording, but these load screens are kind of what you'd expect for a decent-ish computer. If you've got, like, an average, expect slightly slower load screens. Fair enough. Uh, just for anyone who's wondering, I'm running this game on high graphics settings, um, shadows, all of that stuff, it's on high. If you had an amazing machine, it would look slightly better, but kind of expect this to be the standard. There might be the odd stutter um, with the recording. I've noticed that this game and OBS have a couple of issues, which if I had more time to tweak, great. But, you know, for a beta weekend, this is kind of where we're at. But it looks pretty good. So, the way that quests work in this game is you get some basically handed to you. As you can see here, this is an earlier quest that I completed and you have the option to replay missions. Now when you replay a mission you can select what difficulty you want so if you see you can do normal or hard and you get slightly more um, credits and you get an equipment item if you do it on hard if you do it on normal you see it's slightly less than a green item. Um, now another thing which randomly happens if you select a mission you get this annoying voiceover and it kind of just stays there until you click off it, so just be aware of that, it's kind of annoying. Uh, so this is an encounter, there will be like map scans you can do in your main bases, which to start there's one, two, and you scan the map, some things update on your map, so you see we've got one, two, three objectives, so we'll head over to this one now. So as you can see, they've kind of gone for that very high tech uh, sort of graphic overlay, you see we've got this orange marker showing us to our direction. It is a pretty game, I will give it that. It is definitely a pretty game, which is good because much of your experience in the division will be a walking simulator. Um, what the hell is your problem? Also, as you notice then, the NPCs are somewhat bizarre. If you just walk past another person, well, well, I'm about to point that somewhere else. you freak them out. Um, we are in like the neutral territory. Um, and... It doesn't matter if you point your gun at someone, if you don't have a gun out, if you just sort of stroll by someone, run past them, they get freaked out and they start yelling at you. It didn't bother me when I first started playing, but when you do multiple playthroughs, it kind of gets a little bit annoying. Um, the dialogue is one of the biggest issues. It doesn't matter if all you care about is PvP, because you don't encounter that many NPCs. But the dialogue from both friendlies and enemies does get frustrating with increased playtime. All of the vendors are uh, basically assholes who just have a go at you if you buy something or you don't buy something, they're just passive aggressive. It just gets kind of frustrating. Um, as you saw, the civilians are whingy. And for some reason, every enemy is called Alex. Uh, the reason why I mention the fact that every enemy is called Alex is nearby. when you kill them, they just say, you killed Alex over and over again. Now, as you can see, we found a cloud area. Basically, as you can see, you stand still, a scan happens, and then you can click to activate an echo, and you get like a flashback of the past, and it kind of looks like this. Here, make it last, okay? Okay, so stuff didn't go too well for this these guys. To us now. Drop the goods and get the hell out of my sight. So it's quite an interesting way of doing it. You know, it's kind of cool. Um, better than just like reading diaries. And this sort of echo phase will stay and or persist until you run out of the area. So if you run out of the area, it all goes back to normal. Now, one thing I have noticed is for some reason today, the weather effects are extreme. When I was playing yesterday, this wasn't the case. Um, so I'm assuming there's some sort of weather system in this game so um yeah expects torrential blizzards but not all the time yeah, so there's enemies down there but we'll just go to the main mission i'm going to try and rush through some things it's going to be a bit of a long video because i'm going to be showing you a lot 
but as you can see, you know, a lot of this game is running around. Um, it adds to the immersion in some aspects, some people like it, some people might find it a bit dull. Um, most of the major complaints when it comes to this game is in regards to like um, density, enemy want. density, um, and just general encounters both in the PvE and PvP world zones. So that's something to be aware of. Okay, so we're getting closer to our marker. Right, this Morning. is... You are now entering a contaminated area. A contaminated area. Um, basically, the way that this game works, and I'll put the map so you can see it, is, you see we're in like this red square, that means it's contaminated, you can see all the marked contaminated areas on the map. This is the dark zone, aka the PvP zone. And you need certain levels of filter and gear to enter them. If you do not have the appropriate filters, uh, you will take dot damage over time, I believe. So we come in here. Morning. Contaminated supplies detected. Now before we pick up this, we'll pick up this, which is like a collectible. If you pick up all the collectibles, you get um, cosmetic gear, which is basically clothing, which you can interchange at any time. <clears throat> okay, so that's just that. And usually when you boot these up, you then get a timer to find all the other scanners in the nearby right. area. Contamination scan initiated. Okay. So we need to find the second one. Anything over here? It's a bit obnoxious. Okay, that was easy. Alert. Contamination scan initiated. I need to upload. Uh, am I in the wrong building? I think we can jump across. Haven't done this mission before, so bear with me. Should be able to get access from the roof. Perfect. Can we climb up here? No. Can I do that? No. Okay, maybe we can come up this roof and then rejoin somewhere. Either, otherwise, I've just jumped on the wrong fire escape, which is very possible. Okay, so there's a bunch of enemies here. Alright, my aim isn't the best, but, you know, it's serviceable. I'm not really much of a um, shooter player, and I'm having quite a lot of fun with this game, so be aware of that if you were maybe considering it, but you're not that great in the genre, or fresh to it. It's fairly forgiving. Um, it's very, very much a cover-based game, though. Do not expect to be running and gunning. Uh, a lot of the NPCs, if they have the correct level, do a lot of damage. Completed. Data uploaded to JTF servers. So, yeah. Pretty straightforward mission, and this gives a decent idea of what I meant by mob density. Um, a lot of the forts or missions out in the world tend to be run to a location, kill four or five NPCs, then kill a named NPC for a loot drop. And it's pretty much much of the same. Now, one of the first missions you do, the one with the annoying voiceover, um, is kind of like a siege. You kind of go in, there's a massive fort and you have to clear waves upon waves of enemies. Now, it's there tends to be, as I was saying, kind of like groups of four, maybe five, and then siege-based combat when it comes to most of the PvE. Um, there is meant to be like the equivalent of endgame raids and dungeons almost, but as far as I'm aware, we do not have access to that in the beta currently, so not that much I can say about that. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this content, because you're like, well, what if you're only interested in PvP, which is, I would personally would probably only play this game for the PvP sides of it, is you have two different levels, if that makes sense. You have your main level, so you see I'm level 7, um, and you need to have certain levels to wear certain gear, so you see that to use my chest piece I require level 6. Um, you have a PvE level, and you have a PvP level. Anything you do in the dark zone, which again is the PvP zone, will net you dark zone currency and dark zone experience. And there are items which we'll get into later, but that's all dark zone only. So anything you do in the dark zone buffs your dark zone level, right? Um, anything you do in the PvE or the normal world... Um, that only nets you normal or PvE experience. Now, leaving the contaminated area. now the reason why that's important is you need the level requirements 
and the main world is like your real level to equip the best gear. So if you were to jump into the dark zone as soon as you could, which I believe is around about level 4, level 5, um, you can have a lot of fun, but you won't be able to equip the best gear. So at some point you're going to have to do some open world. And can we just appreciate how my light has turned me into a white sheet? Apologies, there's lots of clouds and sun outside. There's not too much I can do with that. Try and bear with my translucence. Um, so at some point you're going to need to do bits of both. Now as you can see here we've got a random scan on the map alerting me that there are electronic parts nearby. A lot of this game involves some level of scavenging and it's generally going into stores, you find a box, you pick it up, you get plus one the electronics. When you find stores like this it's generally the exact same layout. One in the back, one on either side of the room um, and then occasionally a med, med kit bag. So let's see what else we've got in here. And these are all just sort of basic uh, materials you need for crafting, powering up your character, so on and so forth. Let's see if there's anything interesting upstairs. Um, a lot of these buildings are quite a good source for the cosmetic gear, um, inside wardrobes and the such. So let's see if we can find anything such as that. Right. We have the max capacity of whatever that item was, so we can pick it up. Okay, so we've got some food. Let's see if there's a wardrobe nearby. Again, can pick that up. Hunting pads, cool. Right. Let's just quickly scan if there's anything else. One thing I have found in this game is because a lot of the gear that you find visually isn't that interesting if I show you my character now. How's this screwed up world treating you? Cheers, mate. Um, it's kind of like, okay, fairly standard. Now, to give you an example, you can change um, some dupe clips of gear here. Let's see, that's a DPS downgrade, health downgrade, but armor upgrade, so we're not going to equip that. Uh, we should have two different backpacks. So, you don't really see much visual difference in the gear. Um, if, unless, because if you saw that it was the same backpack with different kinds of mods. So you have like tiers of gear which will have slight variations, like the holster here might change colour somewhat. But most of your graphical appearances come from changing your cosmetic gear. Now one rather frustrating system currently is your character doesn't always turn when you open the menu and there's no way to turn it using keyboard mouse. Maybe if you were playing on a controller you could rotate your character, but as of now I can't. So let's say that I wanted to see, oh uh, what does this jacket look like? I can only see the back of it, right? Which, you know, it isn't that bad, but it's kind of frustrating when you have the options of changing, you know, your inner clothes. So, kind of frustrating there. So what ends up happening is you often make a change, have to turn, look at your character. Um, but the other thing which is interesting is sometimes you can force your character to turn by doing this. For some reason. Um, and then sometimes the UI. These are all like just little silly bugs or... Uh, complications that I'm pointing out one to nitpick but two just to give you an idea that it's not completely polished um, which yes okay this is a beta however this is a beta one month from launch so realistically don't expect too much to change from this right this is basically the finished product yeah okay there are some bugs like for example when you make a character there's a chance that the characters you make can't shoot and the way you fix it is you have to like restart the game a few times and eventually it fixes itself. Stuff like that will probably get sorted out. Um, but much of the UI for this game seems to have been solely developed with console in mind. Um, I've heard a lot of very heavy praise um, from console players for the UI and stuff. So what do we get? A med kit. And we've got the max passive med kit so we can look at the Don't tell me you're going bad too. And again, frustrating NPCs. Um, sometimes you can help NPCs, so you'll see something come up, it'll say starving civilian, give them food, give them water, you give them, you know, the odd thing, and you'll get some experience. Other times you no, can't interact Jesus, with them at, at all other than, you know, shouting at you and calling Jesus. 
Now what I do find interesting is sometimes you get scenarios like this. So you can see you've got these two guys and they're pinned by a dog. In my mind, this would be a good way to intervene. Um, if I was to walk up to them, they would all run scared. If I shoot the dog, they'll run scared. There's no way that realistically I can help them at this point. Have you lost your mind? And they just randomly threaten you. I know I've mentioned this a few times now, but it's just kind of frustrating because in some cases they reward you for interacting with civilians, and in other cases the civilians just punish you with frustrating dialogue. Um, you can also break up fights, um, which again, you don't get any experience for, it's just, it just so happens that there are a few NPCs in front of you um, scrapping with one another. You walk towards them, and then they start swearing at you and this and the other. All kind of frustrating, and kind of, it's a good system for them to promote interaction. Okay, so as you can see, you know, you'll occasionally walk into the odd uh, pack of enemies every now and again, you get a little bit of experience, occasionally you get a little bit of gear. Um, but then it's mostly back to the standard, you know, just running around, following the mini-map, and there is a collectible. Agent Trace detected. Okay, that's kind of cool. Haven't found one of those before, so I guess we just follow that. So, as you can see just there, there are a few dynamic um, areas in the world. Um, but one thing which worries me somewhat is once you've done a complete sort of playthrough, will this stuff keep spawning? Because um, I'm assuming once I found, you know, this agent, I won't be able to find her multiple times. But again, most of the map is shut off. Uh, we can't experience the full map, so there might be a lot more content that's currently available. Transmission. Stand by. Guys, we're going to have to cut the city's water pressure. Yeah, they're putting out our fires faster than we can start them. We can't let them get in the way of the job. Okay. Um, so, a lot of my fears, you know, may be quelled or put down once we actually have the finished product in front of us, but I'm just trying to inform people who perhaps weren't able to um, play, you know, the base and just want that, you know, extra idea. Right, so we need to restart. Are there any NPCs in here? Yep, just a couple. So, let's do this. Explode, maybe? Oh, that's funny. Uh, that, what you saw me shoot off there was one of my two special abilities. If I double uh, tap Q, I will heal myself, and if I do E, that's the DPS. Um, the way that abilities work in this game, I'll quickly bring up the menu. Um, and again, one thing which is kind of frustrating, you bring up the menu, you can't change it yet, you've kind of got to do this then do that, tab out of it, then go into abilities, it's just a little bit awkward. See, so I've now unlocked mods for one of my new skills, cool, what is it? It is... this, which... okay, so it's just telling me again, even though I already knew that I'd unlocked abilities for this. So as you can see, these are kind of the equipable abilities, so you have like four tiers of healy, DPS-y, tanky sort of stuff, and you can only have two equipped. And each one has base modifications, then like a master upgrade. Um, and what this is basically in mine, you let it explodes, a heal, and so on and so forth. Uh, the tanking one is you get a riot shield, which you can lay down, but while it's down, you can only use your pistol. So as you can see, we've picked up some loot. Nothing too exciting. Warning, water pressure at critical levels. Okay, so now we're probably going to have to defend ourselves against waves of enemies. Morning. Hostile forces approaching. Am I going to get surrounded at any point? Or is that it? I think we might get surrounded at some point. Okay. Morning. Hostile forces approaching. Morning. Water pressure at critical levels. So as you can see, a lot of these PV things, as I mentioned earlier, are sort of just wave-based. We'll let the explosion finish them off. That was kind of cool. So we need to go restore water pressure. 
Um, it may sound like I'm being overly critical of the game or I'm not really enjoying it. I do really enjoy this game, but mostly in the PvP aspect. So I find the PvE somewhat repetitive. But in a group setting with more difficulty attached, I could see it being quite enjoyable. But, you know, if you don't have that difficulty, it can get a bit grindy. Okay, so he threw a grenade at me. Morning. Hostile forces approaching. I do slightly outlevel this content as well, um, which is something to keep in mind. Okay, so they're up there. Just throwing a grenade on myself. Morning. Forces approaching. Now what usually happens is you have the normal NPCs which are fairly easy and then you get very difficult um, rares or named uh, enemies and they're usually borderline overpowered and you have a few minutes of, you know, cover-based uh, scrapping. But these guys aren't too much of a threat. They do hit fairly hard. Morning. Hostile forces approaching. And usually you are meant to be a lot more patient. I'm sort of running and gunning, which is what I said earlier is exactly what you don't do. But for the sake of trying to keep this video somewhat short, Attention. Um, not I'm not what too interested in a super long brawl. Okay, so as you can Confirmed. see, water pressure restored to normal. No hostile activity detected. Okay, we've completed the mission. Isaac's telling us what's up, and we get to pick up a modern skull cap. And let's see if this is a cool hat indeed. Again, the annoying thing where we need to do weird things, get our characters to turn the way we want them to. Is there a skull on the back? Okay, I don't know. Okay, sure, whatever. We'll wear this for now. Um, alright, now I want to get to level 8, so we'll do this one last mission, but first, so we don't have to run all the way, because that is quite a long way, we can fast travel to the main hubs. Um, you can fast travel to main hubs from anywhere, you cannot fast travel from the main hubs to the dark zone, and that is a manual run you have to do, and, and you'll see that run uh, after this Fall last mission here. Only when my staff, sorry. Is Don't usually go to this base, so slightly disorientated, but should have enough ammo for one more mission. But, um, yeah, this should give you a pretty good idea of how this operates. Um, overall, I think it has a lot of promise. But I do think that enemy density will certainly become an issue. Now, again, it's challenging to say, not having the full experience, but the early play session, especially in the PvE world, and this problem does carry into the Dark Zone, is just a big, big lack of enemies. I know I've been to this point quite a few times now, but I think it's kind of worth stressing, um, because if all I'm going to be doing is running, you know, five minutes, it's from one point, five minutes to another point, you can hear, you just sort of have this ambient track, you don't have music and stuff. Um, it can get a bit boring. This is a game which I think would really benefit from having a radio in it. Um, I know it wouldn't really fit with what they're trying to do, but the lore in this game isn't that strong. So I don't think it would really break the immersion too much. For example, the main virus is called the green toxin poison, uh, the green poison toxin, which is just a mixed mash of words. So as you can see in front of us, just to pause that thought, you've got two civilians fighting. Now again, sometimes you get rewarded for interacting. What would be good here is if we could go over, break it up. Now they've broken up naturally, which is kind of a shame because it breaks what I was gonna say. But she's now freaking out because I walked past her and not putting my gun anywhere near her, this and the other. Um, I think that'd be quite a good way to push more content in the open world. It wouldn't really um, even require Ubisoft to add anything to the game other than a press F Morning. to interact Fantastic and that would be that. Um, and you could choose to peacefully or forcefully break it up. Again, excuse the potato aim. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm really not very good at this game.
Hostile HQ neutralized. Oh. GTF dispatch informed. That was easy. Okay. Um, now you see I got security wing supplies on. Can we loot anything special here? Look at this little box at the back. Um, the way that this game works from a very base level is you. Where's the map? There we go. Uh, you find. Listen up. I spent six years in medical school. I don't give a shit what. Again, that voice it does get kind of frustrating after a while. You get your main uh, base of operations. And you go in there, it's a complete wreck, and there are three different wings. There's the tech wing, the security wing, and the hospital wing, or the medical wing. As you can see in here, you can see how we've upgraded certain things. Now, both tech wing and security wing, as it says, is not available during the beta. Every time you enter, you get this nice little thing telling you how far it is. Now, because they want you to spend time to look at it, you're forced to walk... Uh, through this area. You cannot sprint through it, you cannot do anything. The second you leave, you can run again. But from here till the other side of there, you're forced to walk. Now, I wouldn't mind it too much, but you have to go all the way through this doorway. And it's really frustrating uh, once you've seen everything multiple times to constantly have to be running backwards, forwards, backwards, and forwards. Now, as you can see, you come in here, and usually the way it works is you come in, you click on the computer, you upgrade it from these points, we aren't doing those missions, everything becomes nice and pretty, so on and so forth. So, I'll give, quickly show you what that kind of looks like. So, you normally you come in here, this is the medical wing, this is available. You use the computer, and it shows you what upgrades are available, you know, and they cost... Um, a certain amount of points. This cost me 400 supplies to upgrade it. And when you upgrade it, you get rewards, which basically makes your um, abilities more powerful. And you can see you always get perks, but they've disabled perks. Um, another thing is they have a crafting system, which again is disabled quite frustratingly, so I haven't been able to get any real structure on that. Um, and because of that, there will be probably be a, a lot more missions than we would normally have. Again, I've been complaining about a lack of content. Note how we have to walk through this. But I'm, I only have access to one third of the starter missions. So in theory, there should be three times or two to three times as many things on the map because there would be security missions, tech missions, so on and so forth. So it's not all complete, you know, terrible drama. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the dark zone and I'll show you, you know, some dark zone content. You can get a rough idea of the average play experience. Now, as I was mentioning earlier about group versus solo play, solo play in the dark zone can be increasingly frustrating. Um, it is very punishing to play as solo uh, and far less so to play in a group. Now you say, well, obviously this is a game which is promoting people to team up. The reason why it's increasingly punishing, is that an enemy? I believe it is. Yes, it is. Is there is basically no risk um, to betraying other players. What I mean by that is the way that the loot system... Go away. The way that the loot system works in this game is that any items you pick up in the dark zone um, are left in the dark zone. Is there something we can pick up here, maybe? Alright, so I got a little bit of experience for that. Um, again, civilian in need. Okay, as you can see, give water. So occasionally you, you do get these interactions, and they give you generally some cosmetic. So if they had more of that in the world, that'd be great. Um, if this is a joke, it's not funny. And it's frustrating because the game rewards you, or encourages you, or incentivizes you to walk towards people. At the same time, it disincentivizes the exact same content because that dude's just run a mile because we came to hang out by his pile of boxes. Um, so the game kind of fights itself. And I wouldn't be surprised if we were to now run back up to this woman. She'd probably be afraid of us. It's okay. You don't need to point that at me. <laughs> yeah, now she's... Even though I just helped her by giving her water when she was coughing and spluttering and about to collapse. So there's a weird disconnect, but... Back to the topic at hand. The way the loot system works in the PvP zone is any gear or items that you pick up um, in this area, and we'll just mark it just to make sure we don't get distracted. 
Um, any items we pick up are contaminated. The kind of lore or story aspect of it is the Dark Zone is completely under con uh, not under control. There was a weird, terrible experiment there. And there's nothing we can do, so they've just cordoned it off, and it's in a quarantine. It's okay. You be careful. Okay. Those guys, I didn't even trap them, they're now having a go back. Um, so you go in there, you get your items, and you need to call in a helicopter. The helicopter picks up your items. You then go through some sort of quarantine process and get sent to your stash at your main base. So the kind of gameplay is a lot of running backwards and forwards. You spend as much time as you can in the dark zone until your stash is completely full, at which point you are forced to drop whatever items you have. And the reason why I say that is there's this very frustrating system where any items you pick up inside the dark zone, you cannot take out of the dark zone. The second you leave the dark zone, those contaminated items are destroyed. The only way you get them out is some sort of helicopter which goes to your stash. You can't easily, as far as I'm aware, see how full your stash is while in the dark zone. So what often happens is you fill your stash to nearly full, say 25 out of 30 slots. You th then go out and get um, six contaminated items. You go, oh great, I've got a full bag of contaminated items. I want to call in a helicopter. You call in a helicopter, you wait at the extraction point, you go to load your stuff onto the extraction, and then it says stash is full and you're not able to do anything with those six items. And then you're kind of stuck because you can't do anything. You could drop some maybe, but this is the shit frustrating. You need. Okay, so these are the, ex the example of the Dark Zone vendors. Again, there's Dark Zone currency and then real world currency. Don't ask where this came from. So, as you can see, there's a holster here, which is pretty good. I'm just going to buy this now with what currency I've got. Uh, since I play as solo, generally I like to empty as much of my currency as I can else. before going out. So, we'll just quickly equip that new item. Um, right, so, that would increase my damage, but reduce my health by a lot. So, sort that. I lose some damage, but I'd get a lot of health. I've generally found stacking health is the most efficient. Um, the reason why is kind of silly, um, but basically because this is a limited beta with level caps, Entering contaminated zone. Uh, most people are very undergeared, and I find just having double everyone's health pool, they empty a clip into me, I'm still standing. I empty a clip into them, they're on the floor. Um, so I generally found that's been my best advantage. Transmissions jammed. Proximity so, coverage only. as I was saying with Backup the activated. solar player, I know I keep rebooted. going on and off point, which is probably quite frustrating for you guys. Caution. Entering dark zone. Now, as you can see, I haven't got anything on my back. Let's see if this guy has anything on his back. He doesn't have anything on his back. Oh, he does. Right, that yellow bag that he has on his back indicates that he is carrying contaminated items. Now currently, as you've seen, I've just spent all my currency, and I have no items. If I die in the dark zone, I drop any items I'm holding onto, and I would lose some currency. Now seeing as I've spent all my currency, and I don't, I don't really mind losing it, and I'm not carrying any items, um, now would be the best time for me to go rogue. Basically the way that, that works is if I attack another player, um, you can shoot a player once, if you shoot them again you get marked as rogue, and then a bounty's put on your head. So this is the guy early, who had the nice bag of goodies, he's called in an extraction because he wants to get rid of his items. Now now would be a very good time for me to turn on him, but there are a few other areas and enemy, few other players in the area. The second I attack that dude, I'll get marked as rogue, there'll be a bounty on my head, and all these guys will want to turn and kill me. So now isn't the best way of doing it. Generally what you want to do is you want to find a good place to set up, so let's go on top of here for example because we can then escape down into the sewers afterwards. And you want to pre-lay a bunch of grenades and stuff, just as everyone is swarming up into the helicopter. So that's what we're going to try and do now. It was that. Also, as you can see, NPCs will spawn when you call in an extraction. NPCs can drop loot, and NPCs in the dark zone are generally, from my experience, a lot scarier than those we'll encounter in the open world. So one uh, quite valid strat is you purposely only uh, ever call in extractions and never hand in extractions uh, because you can only call in an extraction if you have the loot on you. Okay, so there's a rogue back there. I'm going to take him out. Now, there is a way to melee players, but this game doesn't have any form of tutorials and for whatever reason, I can't find the keybinding. Um, 
again, if there was a little more knowledge on the game, it'd been out for it longer. I could just Google what the keybind was, uh, but I'm too dim to find the key apparently. Um, a lack of tutorials in this game I have found somewhat frustrating in certain situations. Um, the reason being is some things are told to you quite heavy handedly at the start, and others just aren't. Um, for example, then if say you just use F to interact with everything, um, there's never a tutorial on how extraction works. So if you're a completely fresh character, completely fresh player, there will be some frustrations. Now we kind of got a bit distracted and we let that dude extract loot, so there's nothing really of worth hanging around there. That is an extraction point right next to the start zone. So it's always swarmed by players. Right, here's a bunch of NPCs. And we're doing not very much to them. But they might drop some nice gear. If we get some gear, we can start calling in extractions. And hopefully bait other players into... Into joining the area. Or worst case scenario, we just get some nice loot for ourselves to extract. extract. Now, you get a little bit of experience and currency for killing these NPCs, but far less than you would from killing players. So, as I've said, since I haven't got any good items at the moment, and I don't get very much for farming these NPCs, I'm highly encouraged to farm players more than anything else. And again, this is where the solo issue comes in. Um, there are chests you can find out in the world, however, to open chests you need a Dark Zone key. To get Dark Zone key, you need to farm uh, enough enemies until they eventually drop one, or when a player drop dies, they drop their keys. So again, it's generally just much easier to farm players than anything else. Um, the other issue with this system is you don't get any indication of if a key can be opened or not unless you walk directly next to it. Uh, so what generally happens is this. The first time you enter the dark zone, you have no idea what anything is. You see a chest which you can't open. It doesn't say you require keys, you just can't interact with the chest. Um, so you go, okay, well, that's not a chest then. It's just, you know, random, you know, clutter. So you ignore it. Um, you then later find out they are chests, and you go, oh, brilliant. You then eventually get the key, you go there, someone else has already looted it. And you get this very frustrating gameplay. I've encountered probably 10 chests in this game, and I've opened one. And that is in, you know, two days of playing, probably a total of something about 16 hours. Um, again, if you are an experienced player, you knew all the spawn points, you'd have a better time with it. But, you know, for a fresh player experience, which will be basically everyone at launch, it's kind of frustrating. Alright, so again, we he's got a nice bag of goodies on him, so he is a pretty good person for us to turn on right now. So we're going to do exactly that. Warning. Your division affiliation has been okay, now I'm going to kill him and hide. He didn't have anything good. Oh, God. Rookie play. But he was a rookie as well. Again, normally you can just melee them down. I don't know the keybind for that. So I've got to stand in empty clips. Um, the thing which is kind of relevant about that, though, is you have to empty a lot of bullets into people to kill them, um, which makes long-range combat quite punishing. Okay, this is quite a few rogues in the area. Now, there's currently a weird sniping point, which is a beta-only issue uh, because the maps are limited. In size, and I'll quickly show you how it works. It's kind of frustrating. So, because of the beta um, and certain areas of the map being out of bounds, a few exploits have occurred, and I'll sort of show you how they work. So, one big one is you kind of just hole up in the snipe point, uh, but a certain strat has developed around this particular rope. The way this rope works is, as you can see, I get a warning leaving beta area. If I touch the floor, I get marked as being, as I'll show you now. Warning, leaving beta area. I'll just quickly reload. I'm here. I'm fine. What you can do, uh, because you can't aim directly down, and again, this is mostly a beta issue, um, is I can hide here for my timer to go to zero. If anyone's at the top, they can't shoot directly down at me. 
So for them to kill me, they need to climb down the rope. Now, if they're going to climb down the rope, I just land on the floor, shoot them before the time hits zero, I just start climbing back up, I'm safe. The way the dark zone works, as you can see, I kill two players, I got marked as rogue, I have the skull, I have the timer. If I survive the full timer, I get a big uh, cash out of currency, and I lose that rogue status, I've got my full uh, six items, as you can see on my back, it says extract six out of six. I can then go back over to the helicopter, call in an extraction, hand in, we're all good. So as you can see there, that is the base encouraged behavior for anyone in the game. Not necessarily to exploit hiding on the side of a building, um, but to go in with nothing, kill a bunch of people, right? So, I'll now get my big cash out. You see I've got 261 Dark Zone currency. I can now run back over before I do make sure I reloaded all my weapons. Um, now, there is another dude here. It's the dude I killed earlier, so he might try and get revenge. One thing which I think this game would really benefit from would be some sort of a nemesis system, where if you could see the person who killed you, and you kind of got some form of currency for killing them, even if they weren't a rogue. So, for example, I killed that dude. I've lost my rogue status, but I was still the dude who killed him. If there was some sort of, like, nemesis system where he'd get a reward for attacking me, it would promote PvP because it would promote people to turn rogue, or to um, revenge kill pe players who are likely to turn rogue. Does that make sense? So someone else is called on the extraction. On your I have a full bag of loot, so I want to be quite protective of it. Right, there's a dude down there. I'm not overly trusting of anyone when I have a full bag of loot, so I'm just going to find a nice place to hide. People generally don't come down here, so I'm just going to sort of chill down here. Agent, I am inbound on your position. So as I was saying, a nemesis system would be a good way of one, promoting PvP, but also punishing PvPers. Um, you generally get three different kinds of player. You get the opportunist player, who just kind of goes for whatever he thinks will get him the best reward. Uh, you get the players who just love the PvP, and you get the honest player. Now, I've encountered a few people, I've read a few articles of honest players, who are people who, they just want to go out in the dark zone, they like the threat of other players. Um, but they're not that interested in stealing other people's hard work. They kind of just want to get their own loot, get to a helicopter, get it out, and they just like the threat, but they don't want to attack other people because they th they know they would personally feel bad, so they don't want to do it. Now, that kind of player has no reward in the dark zone. The reason why is I'm not in a party with someone. If another allied player or non-rogue was to be downed on the floor, that's when you're crawling around, I could revive him and I could get him back up. I have no reason to. If I let him die, he drops his gear, and I can just pick it up. Um, if I revive him, he might say thank you on voice comms. He might invite me into a group, but there's generally no reason for me to do so. Because of that, good behavior is never promoted, and again, you're only promoting negative behavior. Which is fine for a PvP game, but it means that the game will never appeal to a certain kind of player. Um, and that's bad. You want to reward multiple playstyles. Um, otherwise, what will happen is the honest players will just get driven out of this game instantly. So that's the dude I killed earlier. If there was another system, he'd have a reason to kill me. Which he currently doesn't. So now we're bestest buddiest pals. We'll do some jumping jacks. Extraction operation complete. I got the extraction, I got my loot out. Um, now, I picked up a few keys when I killed those two players, and I picked up some currency. So, dying now, I wouldn't lose any items, I'd lose all my keys, and I'd lose a bunch of currency. So, there is some, you know, reason for me to not want to turn rogue now. So, generally, what the wise thing for me to do would be, would be to run around, look for a few chests, hopefully I find a chest I can open. Maybe hunt the rogues I see on the mini-map near me, because rogues are marked on the map. Let's take the shortcut. Um, and head back to base and spend the currency. And that's kind of the play style as a solo player. If I was a group, uh, I could be a lot more daring. I could stay out for longer periods of time. But you're always incredibly vulnerable as solo. Now, instead of running directly back to base, which is what my original point is, I'm just going to do a few laps of the dark zone to give you an idea of the enemy density. As you can see, NPCs did spawn. Um when the extraction was called in, and we have just encountered a mob here. Now that purple shield means he's like, 
even more powerful. So hopefully he will drop decent items. No, he just dropped some, but there's some more mobs down here. So we'll clear this guy out. There's some more down there. Now they're not particularly intelligent, the AI. Um, they generally like to hide in cover and then just charge at you. Um, and I found that you can generally just charge them. He flashbanged himself. Which doesn't make too much sense to me, but okay. Oh, whoops. Warning. You've disavowed the division. This action will mark you as grow. Right, let's say sorry to him. Uh, sorry dude, thought you were an NPC. Maybe he'll trust me. Let's have a look. We'll stand here, do jumping jacks. Oh no, he's, he wants to play. Threw a grenade at me. We can wait for my time to fall off. Hey, sorry about that, man. And there is push to talk. Let's see if he talks back. No, he hasn't got it enabled. Um, this game has got inbuilt voice comms, and it's generally just a push to talk system. You can talk to everyone in the area. I usually find most of the fun in this area comes from just talking to other people. Uh, because people get pretty interesting. Um, if you get other players, you can get really weird conversations. And when you do help someone up, they will often say thank you, which is kind of nice. But, you know, if there was some sort of currency reward, that would be good. Because it would promote a certain kind of gameplay rather than just that, you know, um, opportunist. opportunist. Um, now, we could go for those rogues. I like to see what do. Alright. Found a building. Is there any good stuff in here? No. I feel like there should be more loot just generally readily available throughout the map. Right. I believe that's a chest. And we have keys. So I'm assuming someone's recently looted it. If there was some kind of timer or something so I could see. Um, oh, I come back. Like, if there was a timer, but come back in eight minutes. Then what would be good is people would naturally start to learn the timers. And again, it would funnel PvP. It would funnel players together. Um, or maybe not PvP, but you could have groups defending it, maybe have NPC waves coming. But, you know, just a few more things to make the world feel a little more interesting, other than just sort of a walking simulator with moments of fun, which is generally what I've found this uh, beta to be for the most part. Um, if there was just more loot, it doesn't even need to be items, it could just be cosmetic stuff out in the world, then that'd be pretty good. Um, but generally, you just kind of get the odd chest, and that's that. Sometimes, you know, for NPCs, which is, I don't know, a little bit frustrating. Um, again, I do have to make the point that, as you can see, we are only given access to a tiny bit of the zone. You know, there's still all of this. You know, the map might even open out even more. Um, I don't know the full scope of it, but, you know, we were only given access to, you know, a, a chunk, you know, considering I assume this is the full game map. And it could potentially spawn out to, you know, other areas. Now, one thing I will do since, you know, these chests have timers on them so we can't use our keys. Is I'm going to try and promote some PvP uh, through a kind of, I wouldn't say it's that scummy, it's kind of scummy. Uh, method which, I wouldn't say I've developed it because a lot of people are doing it. But there's basically this, this quite good trend has turned up where, as I said earlier on. You can accidentally shoot someone once before being marked as rogue. So what I like to do is I like to hang around extraction points and shoot people in the face. Now if you shoot them once, you don't get marked as rogue. They think they're under attack. Um, that People don't always fall for it, but we can try it here. So let's just shoot this guy. He thinks I'm trying to kill him. So he might empty a clip into me. Okay, he's empty a clip into me. He's now marked as rogue. He was in a group, so they're both marked as rogue. And I just got rewarded for killing two rogue players. Um, now... <laughs> okay, there's a rogue over there. We're going to go clean him up. We haven't got long to get to him. If I hit him, oh, someone else took him down. Well, I might be yeah, able to grab the loot. Okay, and now these guys beat me to him. They apparently weren't a fan. Um, one thing which is kind of interesting, because the if people who use the in-game voice comms communicate, it's just given to everyone within the area. 
Um, let's try this. I might think I'm turning on him. He does. He's now marked his road. Uh, I got taken down. Someone might... Uh. Okay, so I waited a little too long. But that dude got marked his road. You can see I lost some currency. I lost one key. And I lost some experience. But for dying with no items... Um, I lost nothing in comparison to what I've gained from killing other players. Um, can you hear what I'm saying? So that's kind of the game, really. That's sort of it. So I'll restock, you know, show you what this vendor has to offer. Maybe we picked up some decent gear. Right, those upgrades, I lose a lot of health and I'm stacking stamina, as, as I mentioned earlier, so it's not really worth my time. But, you know, I've gained a bunch of currency, I've gained some keys, da 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 leveled up a few times. So, you know, that's kind of that. So this has been a pretty long, you know, video, 51 minutes, so sorry if it dragged on at times, but you kind of get the idea. Basically, reward more solo activity by promoting people to interact with one another at the world. Sort out the annoying dialogue, like the sassy vendors, the random civilians. Um, and, yeah, that is kind of it. Good game, lacking a little bit in the open world in general. Just needs more, it needs more stuff, more loot more random events and more enemies i'm target cat thanks for watching get over here before someone notices you i hate the dialogue in this game and uh yeah you know if you like it you like it i will keep playing this i'll probably buy this on launch and i've got a few of my mates so i'm convinced that we'll have a lot of fun doing the pvp but outside of the pvp i'm not sure if i could fully recommend it have a good day bye bye